It's just improv. I'm making it up. Hold on. I have no idea what's coming out of my body right now. It's just... I'm feeling the music. Oh, I'm reaching for the stars, bro. I've got some 80... Woo! I was expecting a little more from you. Okay, that's cool. It's fine. It's fine. I'll keep it to words then. It's awesome. <laughs> I did enjoy it. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't prepared for it, but I did enjoy it. You made the song. You didn't make it for people to stand still and nod their heads sagely while looking at you with a stern a stern smile. It does happen a lot, that though. I don't, I don't believe that for a second, bro, because I'm getting reports that what you're doing on the White Isle right now in the Balearics is off the charts. I mean, talk about a triumphant return for quality club music and for the DJ and producer who makes it. Just before we get into this and the album, how's it been this season, man? This season, for, you know, back real time. More than anything else, it's been nice to see people um, with uh, smiling faces having a good time uh, in a in a group, you know, which isn't, you know, I think we got used to not seeing that. So that's still a, a big novelty. And um, yeah, my gigs have been great. There's been a ton of people there. Dude, I hear the guest list is off the chart. you got to give us some idea about who's shown up this summer, man, because it's all over the papers anyway. So who's been coming to the clubs? Well, we had um, primarily a lot of footballers this year. Um, a lot a lot, a lot, lot of good footballers. We had Kevin De Bruyne, Virgil van Dijk, and Nathan Aki together. <laughs> of the younger lads, Harvey Elliott and uh, Billy Gilmore. Um mm -hmm. And, and then, yeah, like a, a, a few DJs, a few, few music people as well. But um, it's less about that and more about just like folk having a lovely time. When we talked last time and you were getting ready to play shows again, you were like, man, I can't wait to go out there and just play back to back. And so has that kind of still been the philosophy? Have you just been hitting people between the eyes or have you been kind of like finding that there's a different groove in the bag that needs to be played on a, on a certain night? No, nah, primarily for me, uh, because it's because I'm playing. I want to play my songs, so I've been playing a lot of my songs. And ever since I did this, um, I did this show at uh, Hamden Stadium. When I played even more of my songs, I started playing even more of my songs in Ibiza as well. Because I thought, you know what, they are they they are good, and people know them. So uh, nothing to be ashamed of. Never, Calvin, and never has been. Um, so Funk Wave, I know you didn't make that for this particular type of environment. You know, it was it was a more personal exercise for you. Um, a different kind of enjoyment than making something you know is going to rock 120 to 125 beats per minute in a big club. But are you working these in? I mean, have you found a way to make this work in your set? No, nah, it's impossible. I play, um, mm. I play slide now, and that was ever since Hamden. Um, a nice little interlude. But as for everything else, now. Nah. You say it's impossible, and yet you took a first step towards the summit. With slide is that first step. What are, how do people react to it? Well, because people know it, then it, it goes down well. But um, but I mean, I could play slide, but I couldn't play feels. You know, I would feel strange about playing that. So it's one of them. Um, but now nah, there's nothing from this album I'm gonna try and like shoehorn in there. This this album is like for uh, car journeys and uh, beaches and things like this. How do you get yourself into a place where you know you're capturing that experience of being in a car, heading to the beach, you know, going for an amazing walk on your own and having something that feels joyous? What I was doing a lot was um taking trips to the mountains is when I still lived in LA, taking a trip out to this place called Idlewild um, in the car, listening to a lot of psychedelic rock, um, and then climbing the mountain, literally and figuratively, and then uh, heading back. So I was doing a lot of that, putting a lot of vinyl, get into that kind of zone. Yeah, well, I've seen the images you've been posting and I love that. And uh, as someone who started collecting again really obsessively and passionately, it was, it's awesome just to, to get a sense of that kind of tactility, that static, that dust on this music and in particular on this song, Obsessed. Um, God, there's a lot for me to untangle here in terms of inspiration. I feel like there's definitely some kind of late 70s FM sort of soul going on here you know Puth is is about the closest thing to a young yacht rock singer that we have in the modern age and then you got Shensia just bodying it so in your words I mean that's just my amateur description in your words what are we dealing with on this song what were you trying to conjure um well I mean we start off with the with the yacht rock beat and then Charlie was basically channeling Michael McDonald yeah there it and, is um it was kind of like um I wanted to take a lot of the auto-tune off his voice 
I didn't want him to sound necessarily like how he does in his records. It's interesting that you did that too, because he's gone from sounding like Charlie Puth on a song now to Charlie Puth on a song. It's, it's, it's like pretty rich. When you're Charlie Puth, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. So I think there's, there's a, there, there's a, a shepherding that needs to happen sometimes with people that are just so talented. Yeah. Talented that you need to kind of go, well, what about this? Or try that. It's okay to sing like this. or it's okay to do it like this. And, I think um, once I kind of gave him permission to do that, um, uh, he, he went with it and he was amazing at it. And then the sincere element was more like, um, ah, it kind of reminded me of those 90s hip hop tunes that were kind of like commercial and they had a disco sample and then it would be like Lil' Kim on it or something like that. Um, <laughs> and because um, because that beat is kind of like, like that and sincere uh was someone that i really wanted to work with i was like well this surely would work and it did because she's brilliant you know when we spoke that you, you you sort of wouldn't give much away rightfully so but now the track listing's out and the album's out and so everyone knows who's on what um but you you said there's there's some people on this album that i i, I still wake up and i'm like how did this happen um he sort of must be at liberty now to say like who really I mean everyone's amazing everyone who showed up was was by design but who who one of those people you know are that you were just like there's no way this is going to happen and it happened I mean honestly for me um, just from uh, uh, the viewpoint of music that I listened to growing up getting Pharrell and Pusha T on a song was big getting Pharrell and Justin Timberlake and Halsey on a song felt amazing to me and like such an amazing experience um and it was those two that that stood out in that respect i didn't realize that you've left la now are you back in the uk full time no i'm kind of i'm kind of living a bit of a nomadic existence at the moment i'm not sure where i live i'm in ibiza at the moment because i have these shows um and then after that uh i'm gonna figure it out that's amazing. Um, I only mentioned the UK because I, I figured that might be a natural resting place for you at some point. And I, I love seeing you know artists like Deneo on this record too. Now, for a lot of people who are watching this, listening to this, they won't recognize uh, that name. Um, it's a beautiful introduction to this artist who has been gifting us with not just his voice, but like this righteous approach to lyrics and music and what he stands for, for a long time. So for fans of Calvin Harris who see you as the guy who can put Pharrell and Halsey and Justin Timberlake on a record. Can you just give some context to Deneo and what drew you to him? I don't think I can describe Deneo, actually. Um, well, the first time I met him, he told me that he was blessed with a well of vibes. And I think that kind of sums it up. <laughs> and, you know, since then, like, I, I did some songs with him. Um, we, we, we hung out a bit and uh, we became friends, you know, and... and, and he was always someone that I wanted to put on something. I just didn't know what. Um, so this seemed like a good a good way of doing that. And he he just won't let you down when it comes to a vocal or a, or a feeling or a delivery. He's uh, uh, you know he's a pro and he's and he's brilliant. There's so many amazing people we could go through the entire list, but someone does immediately spring to mind for me, which is um, Georgia Smith again, staying in the UK. And again, an artist that I feel has has taken a really deliberate approach to the way she releases her music and moves and doesn't remotely lean into this kind of attention-seeking space that everyone else seems drawn towards. How was the experience working with Georgia and, and what did you learn from that? Because I know you do this for the learning. Yeah, it was amazing. It was actually surprising initially to me that she wanted to work, like that she was receptive to that because um, the... The, the persona I feel like that she puts out is a little bit, for me, a little bit standoffish. So I was like, mm -hmm. well, maybe, uh, maybe she, you know, she's probably not up for it. And she was so up for it. And not only was she up for it, she was like um, very sort of excited and, and happy to do it. And um, the the song turned out amazingly, I think. Like when, when she put out, um, I think on her second album, this song called Bust Down, and her voice seemed to hit this new level that, that i'd never heard anything like it in my life and i've rinsed that record just at the, in the car and or, and everywhere um and i thought wow if i can get her to sound like that um over one of these kind of beats it would just be phenomenal and it turns out she just sounds like that so it was, it was, it was <laughs> you're easy. a genius Cal. you're a genius it, it was easy because she's 
Brilliant. As a starter conversation for one, we'll have at a later date because I'd love to dive into this aspect in real detail. Um, I just want to ask you this on a simple level. As a, as a vocal producer, not just a producer, a mixer, an artist, and a creative yourself, but as someone who has to produce vocals, that's a very different discipline to producing music. Um, you know, it, it requires you to be able to speak a certain language. So what is it that you've learned about your ability to do that? For other people who are trying to bring great performance out of real talent, what's one simple kind of thing you've learned along the way to make that easy for yourself? It's a great question, and I've got absolutely no idea. I think um, a lot of the time I take lead from the artist, and a lot of the time it just comes down to personal taste. Like with the Charlie Proof thing, I knew how I wanted him to sing. I knew how I didn't want him to sing, and everything was just very easy from that point but um some artists you 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 can't tell them because they're too good say justin timberlake for example i can't tell justin timberlake anything like he's a he's a producer in himself he's a vocal producer so he's gonna just go and do his thing and i think maybe the secret is just working with people that are really good and then that's just kind of easier that's sage advice for anybody listening because i think we're drawn to people with a willingness but willingness isn't always enough I think you have to have a real understanding of what it, what your craft is and where you're at for it to be get, to get to this point, right? I don't know. My main thing is just I'm trying uh, – just don't be – do you know what I mean? Like I'm just trying to make something that's good and I'm not trying to force anything and I'm trying to have a laugh and work with people that want to work with me and just all those kind of things. I'm not um, – I do not subscribe to the modern mentality. I just want to make some good tunes. And if you like them, you like them. If you don't like them, that's okay as well. Um, I'm just going to be over here doing my thing. And that's just kind of where I'm at. We'll be back after the break. But the prevailing message for all creatives listening at home from super producer Calvin Harris is don't be It's more have a laugh. Okay, okay, good. But also, I think people inherently know what's and what isn't. Definitely. I think people inherently know, oh, this is a bit, I'll do it. It might be popular, but I'll, uh, yeah, it is, but I will do it. Have you ever done that? Have you, have you felt yourself drawn into that? Oh, yeah, like 10, 10 years ago, for sure. Um, but you come out of it and you realize that life is more about getting a cow and uh, growing some vegetables than trying to appease the masses. Okay, so before I let you go, the season's wrapping up. Um, I know that you've got other shows on the horizon. Everything's going well. You seem super engaged by this part of your life. Um, I'm, I'm going to say it again. I'm not sure you were at some point, but we've dwelled on that before and we've covered that. Um, so where does, this, where does this sort of lead you next? Like what is the sort of prevailing feeling that you have inside of you right now regarding music and life? Uh, music, I don't know. I'm just going to, like I said earlier, have a laugh and, and make what I want to make. Life, just want to get that Jersey cow, um, and you know, I, I I will not subscribe to the uh, to the uh, what's being pushed right now. I just want to build my own thing and have a laugh and have a good time and let people know that that's okay as well. You know, we don't have to be scared and upset over something all the time that we frequently can't change. We can change the reaction within ourselves and we can get a cow. Save up for a cow. This has been a really enlightening and wonderful conversation, as it always is. Um, I know that there's a, there's a possibility that we'll be able to talk a little bit more about agriculture and uh, the soulful side of life, because that's something I'm per right now in the process of getting my own proverbial cow. So once again, at this point, we have found ourselves in a fairly similar space. So we should talk about that at some point. Absolutely. I mean, for me, like music's one thing, and then the rest of it is the rest of it. And I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more about the rest of it at the minute. 